the earliest known world maps date to classical antiquity. The oldest examples of the 6th to 5th centuries BCE still based on the flat earth paradigm. World maps assuming a spherical earth first appear in the Hellenistic period. The developments of Greek geography during this time, notably by Eratosthenes and Posidonius, culminated in the Roman era, with Ptolemy world map 2nd century CE, which would remain authoritative throughout the Middle Ages. Since Ptolemy, knowledge of the approximate size of the globe allowed cartographers to estimate the extent of their geographical knowledge, and to indicate parts of the globe known to exist but not yet explored as terra incognita. With the Age of Discovery, during the 15th to 18th centuries, world maps became increasingly accurate. Exploration of Antarctica, Australia, and the interior of Africa by Western mapmakers was left to the 19th and early 20th century. Topic: Antiquity. Topic: Babylonian Amago Mundi, ca. 6th C. BCE. A Babylonian world map, known as the Amago Mundi, is commonly dated to the 6th century BCE. The map, as reconstructed by Eckhard Unger, shows Babylon on the Euphrates, surrounded by a circular landmass showing Assyria, Urartu, Armenia, and several cities, in turn surrounded by a bitter river, Oceanus, with eight outlying regions NAGU arranged around it in the shape of triangles, so as to form a star. The accompanying text mentions a distance of seven Beru between the outlying regions. The descriptions of five of them have survived. The third region is where the winged bird ends not his flight, i.e., cannot reach. On the fourth region, the light is brighter than that of sunset or stars. It lay in the northwest, and after sunset in summer was practically in semi-obscurity. The fifth region, due north, lay in complete darkness, a land, where one sees nothing, and the sun is not visible. The sixth region, where a horned bull dwells and attacks the newcomer. The seventh region lay in the east and is where the morning dawns. A final paragraph summarizes in all eight regions NAGU of the four shores Kabrati of the Aya RTH. Their interior no one knows. Topic Anaximander C six one zero five four six BCE Anaximander died C. 546 BCE, is credited with having created one of the first maps of the world, which was circular in form and showed the known lands of the world grouped around the Aegean Sea at the center. This was all surrounded by the ocean. Hecateus of Miletus c. 550 to 476 BCE Hecateus of Miletus died c. 476 BCE is credited with a work entitled Jes Periodos Travels Round the Earth or World Survey, in two books each organized in the manner of a periplus, a point-to-point -point coastal survey. 
One on Europe, is essentially a periplus of the Mediterranean, describing each region in turn, reaching as far north as Scythia. The other book, on Asia, is arranged similarly to the periplus of the Erythraean Sea of which a version of the 1st century CE survives. Hecateus described the countries and inhabitants of the known world, the account of Egypt being particularly comprehensive. The descriptive matter was accompanied by a map, based upon Anaximander's map of the Earth, which he corrected and enlarged. The work only survives in some 374 fragments, by far the majority being quoted in the geographical lexicon Ethnica compiled by Stephanus of Byzantium. Eratosthenes, 276–194 BCE Eratosthenes 276 to 194 BCE drew an improved world map incorporating information from the campaigns of Alexander the Great and his successors Asia became wider reflecting the new understanding of the actual size of the continent Eratosthenes was also the first geographer to incorporate parallels and meridians within his cartographic depictions, attesting to his understanding of the spherical nature of the Earth. Posidonius c. 150–130 BCE Posidonius or Poseidonus of Apamea c. 135–51 BCE, was a Greek Stoic philosopher who travelled throughout the Roman world and beyond and was a celebrated polymath throughout the Greco-Roman world, like Aristotle and Eratosthenes. His work, "...about the ocean and the adjacent areas." was a general geographical discussion, showing how all the forces had an effect on each other and applied also to human life. He measured the Earth's circumference by reference to the position of the star Canopus. His measure of 240,000 stadia translates to 24,000 miles kilometers, close to the actual circumference of 24,901 miles 40, kilometers. He was informed in his approach by Eratosthenes, who a century earlier used the elevation of the Sun at different latitudes. Both men's figures for the Earth's circumference were uncannily accurate, aided in each case by mutually compensating errors in measurement. However, the version of Posidonius's calculation popularized by Strabo was revised by correcting the distance between Rhodes and Alexandria to 3,750 stadia, resulting in a circumference of 180,000 stadia, or 18,000 miles Ptolemy discussed and favored this revised figure of Posidonius over Eratosthenes in his Geographia, and during the Middle Ages scholars divided into two camps regarding the circumference of the Earth, one side identifying with Eratosthenes' calculation and the other with Posidonius's 180,000 stadion measure. Topic. Strabo, c. 64 BCE to 24 CE. Strabo is mostly famous for his 17 volume work Geographica, which presented a descriptive history of people and places from different regions of the world known to his era. 
The Geographica first appeared in Western Europe in Rome as a Latin translation issued around 1469. Although Strabo referenced the antique Greek astronomers Eratosthenes and Hipparchus and acknowledged their astronomical and mathematical efforts towards geography, he claimed that a descriptive approach was more practical. Geographica provides a valuable source of information on the ancient world, especially when this information is corroborated by other sources. Within the books of Geographica is a map of Europe. Whole world maps according to Strabo are reconstructions from his written text. Topic. Pomponius Mela c. 43 CE. Pomponius is unique among ancient geographers in that, after dividing the Earth into five zones, of which two only were habitable, he asserts the existence of Antikythones, people inhabiting the southern temperate zone inaccessible to the folk of the northern temperate regions due to the unbearable heat of the intervening torrid belt. On the divisions and boundaries of Europe, Asia and Africa, he repeats Eratosthenes, like all classical geographers from Alexander the Great, except Ptolemy, he regards the Caspian Sea as an inlet of the Northern Ocean corresponding to the Persian Persian Gulf and Arabian Red Sea gulfs on the south. Topic. Marinus of Tyre c. 120 CE. Marinus of Tyre's world maps were the first in the Roman Empire to show China. Around 120 CE, Marinus wrote that the habitable world was bounded on the west by the Fortunate Islands. The text of his geographical treatise however is lost. He also invented the equirectangular projection, which is still used in map creation today. A few of Marinus' opinions are reported by Ptolemy. Marinus was of the opinion that the Okeanos was separated into an eastern and a western part by the continents Europe, Asia and Africa. He thought that the inhabited world stretched in latitude from Thule, Shetland, to Aegisimba, Tropic of Capricorn, and in longitude from the Isles of the Blessed to Shira, China. Marinus also coined the term Antarctic, referring to the opposite of the Arctic Circle. His chief legacy is that he first assigned to each place a proper latitude and longitude. He used a meridian of the Isles of the Blessed Canary Islands or Cape Verde Islands as the zero meridian. Topic: Ptolemy, c. 150. Surviving texts of Ptolemy geography, first composed c. 150, note that he continued the use of Marinus's equirectangular projection for its regional maps while finding it inappropriate for maps of the entire known world. Instead, in Book 7 of his work, he outlines three separate projections of increasing difficulty and fidelity. Ptolemy followed Marinus in underestimating the circumference of the world, combined with accurate absolute distances, this led him to also overestimate the length of the Mediterranean Sea in terms of degrees. His prime meridian at the Fortunate Isles was therefore around 10 actual degrees further west of Alexandria than intended, a mistake that was corrected by al Khwarezmi following the translation of Syriac editions of Ptolemy into Arabic in the 9th century. 
The oldest surviving manuscripts of the work date to Maximus Planudes's restoration of the text a little before 1300 at Kora Monastery in Constantinople, Istanbul. Surviving manuscripts from this era seem to preserve separate recensions of the text which diverged as early as the 2nd or 4th century. A passage in some of the recensions credits an agathodemon with drafting a world map, but no maps seem to have survived to be used by Planudes monks. Instead, he commissioned new world maps calculated from Ptolemy thousands of coordinates and drafted according to the text's first and second projections, along with the equirectangular regional maps. A copy was translated into Latin by Jacobus Angelus at Florence around 1406 and soon supplemented with maps on the first projection. Maps using the second projection were not made in Western Europe until Nicolaus Germanus's 1466 edition. Ptolemy III and hardest projection does not seem to have been used at all before new discoveries expanded the known world beyond the point where it provided a useful format. Cicero's dream of Scipio described the Earth as a globe of insignificant size in comparison to the remainder of the cosmos. Many medieval manuscripts of Macrobius' commentary on the dream of Scipio include maps of the Earth, including the Antipodes, zonal maps showing the Ptolemaic climates derived from the concept of a spherical Earth and a diagram showing the Earth, labeled as Globus Terrae, the sphere of the Earth, at the center of the hierarchically ordered planetary spheres. Topic. Tabula Pudingeriana 4th century. The Tabula Pudingeriana Pudinger table, is an itinerarium showing the cursus publicus, the road network in the Roman Empire. It is a 13th-century copy of an original map dating from the 4th century, covering Europe, parts of Asia, India, and North Africa. The map is named after Konrad Putinger, a German 15th-16th century humanist and antiquarian. The map was discovered in a library in Worms by Konrad Seltz, who was unable to publish his find before his death, and bequeathed the map in 1508 to Putinger. It is conserved at the Österreichische Nationalbibliothek, Hofburg, Vienna. Topic. Middle Ages Topic. Cosmos Indica Plus's map 6th century. Around 550 Cosmos Indica Plus days wrote the copiously illustrated Christian Topography, a work partly based on his personal experiences as a merchant on the Red Sea and Indian Ocean in the early 6th century. Though his cosmogony is refuted by modern science, he has given a historic description of India and Sri Lanka during the 6th century, which is invaluable to historians. Cosmos seems to have personally visited the kingdom of Aksum in modern Ethiopia and Eritrea, as well as India and Sri Lanka. In 522 CE, he visited the Malabar coast, South India. A major feature of his topography is Cosmos' worldview that the world is flat, and that the heavens form the shape of a box with a curved lid, a view he took from unconventional interpretations of Christian scripture. Cosmos aimed to prove that pre-Christian geographers had been wrong in asserting that the Earth was spherical and that it was in fact modeled on the tabernacle, the house of worship described to Moses by God during the Jewish exodus from Egypt. Topic. 
Topic: Isidore of Seville's T and O map, c. 636. The medieval T and O maps originate with the description of the world in the Etymologia of Isidore of Sevilla, died 636. This qualitative and conceptual type of medieval cartography represents only the top half of a spherical Earth. It was presumably tacitly considered a convenient projection of the inhabited portion of the world known in Roman and medieval times, that is, the northern temperate half of the globe. The T is the Mediterranean, dividing the three continents, Asia, Europe and Africa, and the O is the surrounding ocean. Jerusalem was generally represented in the center of the map. Asia was typically the size of the other two continents combined. Because the sun rose in the east, paradise, the Garden of Eden, was generally depicted as being in Asia, and Asia was situated at the top portion of the map. Topic: Albi Mappa Mundi, 8th century. The Albi Mappa Mundi is a medieval map of the world, included in a manuscript of the second half of the 8th century, preserved in the old collection of the library Pierre Amalric in Albi, France. This manuscript comes from the chapter library of the St. Cecile Albi Cathedral. The Albi Mappa Mundi was inscribed in October 2015 in the memory of the World Programme of UNESCO. The manuscript bearing the card contains 77 pages. It is named in the 18th century, Miscellanea, Latin word meaning, collection. This collection contains 22 different documents, which had educational functions. The manuscript, a parchment probably made from a goat or sheep skin, is in a very good state of preservation. The map itself is 27 cm high by 22.5 wide. It represents 23 countries on three continents and mentions several cities, islands, rivers and seas. The known world is represented in the form of a horseshoe, opening at the level of the Strait of Gibraltar, and surrounding the Mediterranean, with the Middle East at the top, Europe on the left and North Africa on the right. Topic. Ibn Hockel's map 10th century Ibn Haqqal was an Arab scientist of the 10th century who developed a world map, based on his own travel experience and probably the works of Ptolemy. Another such cartographer was al Istakri. <laughs> Anglo Saxon cotton world map c. 1040. This map appears in a copy of a classical work on geography, the Latin version by Prishon of the Periagesis, that was among the manuscripts in the Cotton Library, Ms. Tiberius B. V. Full. 56 V., now in the British Library. It is not intended purely as an illustration to that work, for it contains much material gathered from other sources, including some which would have been the most up-to-date available, although it is based on a distant Roman original similar to the source of another 11th-century world map, illustrating an edition of Isidore of Seville, on which the network of lines appears to indicate the boundaries of imperial provinces. 
The date of drawing was formerly estimated at about CE 992 to 994, based on suggested links to the journey of Archbishop Sigaric of Canterbury from Rome, but more recent analysis indicates that although the information was revised about that time, the map was probably drawn between 1025 and 1050, like the later map by Aladrisi. See below. This map is clearly outside the largely symbolic early medieval mapping tradition, but equally it is not based on the famous Ptolemaic coordinate system. East is at the top, but Jerusalem is not in the center, and the Garden of Eden is nowhere to be seen. Unusually, all the waterways of Africa, not just the Red Sea, are depicted in red, mountains or green. The depiction of the Far East is ambitious, including India and Taprabane, Sri Lanka. The latter depicted according to the exaggerated classical conception of its size. Unsurprisingly, Britain itself is depicted in some detail. Great Britain, unusually by medieval standards, is shown as one island, albeit with an exaggerated Cornish promontory, and Mona, Ireland and the many Scottish islands are all indicated. The cartographer is slightly confused by Iceland, depicting it both by a version of its classical name, Thule, northwest of Britain, and as island, logically linked with Scandinavia. An open-access high-resolution digital image of the map with place and name annotations is included among the 13 medieval maps of the world edited in the Virtual Mappa project. Topic: <laughs> Beatus Mappa Mundi 1050. Beatus of Liabana, C. 730 to 798 was an Asturian monk and theologian. He corresponded with Alcuin and took part in the adoptionist controversy, criticizing the views of Felix of Urgell and Elipandus of Toledo. He is best remembered today as the author of his commentary on the Apocalypse, published in 776. An illustrated manuscript known as the Saint Sever Beatus, featuring the commentary, was produced around 1050 at the Abbey of Saint Sever, Aquitaine, France. It contains one of the oldest Christian world maps as an illustration of the commentary. Although the original manuscript and map has not survived, copies of the map survive in several of the extant manuscripts. Topic: Mahmud al-Kashgari's map, 1072. Karakhanid Uyghur scholar Mahmud al-Kashgari compiled a compendium of the languages of the Turks in the 11th century. The manuscript is illustrated with a «Turkocentric» world map, oriented with east or rather, perhaps, the direction of midsummer sunrise on top, centered on the ancient city of Balasagun in what is now Kyrgyzstan, showing the Caspian Sea to the north, and Iraq, Armenia, Yemen and Egypt to the west, China and Japan to the east, Hindustan, Kashmir, Gog and Magog to the south. Conventional symbols are used throughout blue lines for rivers, red lines for mountain ranges, etc. The world is shown as encircled by the ocean. The map is now kept at the Para Museum in Istanbul. <laughs> Al Adrisi's Tabula Rogeriana.
the Moroccan geographer, Muhammad al-Adrisi, incorporated the knowledge of Africa, the Indian Ocean and the Far East gathered by Arab merchants and explorers with the information inherited from the classical geographers to create the most accurate map of the world at the time. It remained the most accurate world map for the next three centuries. The Tabula Rogeriana was drawn by al Adrisi in 1154 for the Norman King Roger II of Sicily, after a stay of 18 years at his court, where he worked on the commentaries and illustrations of the map. The map, written in Arabic, shows the Eurasian continent in its entirety, but only shows the northern part of the African continent. <inaudible> Ebstorf Mappa Mundi 1235. The Ebstorf map was an example of a European Mappa Mundi, made by Gervis of Ebstorf, who was possibly the same man as Gervis of Tilbury, some time in the 13th century. It was a very large map, painted on 30 goatskins sewn together, it measured about 3.6 metres times 3.6 metres 12 feet times 12 feet. The head of Christ was depicted at the top of the map, with his hands on either side and his feet at the bottom. The map was a greatly elaborated version of the medieval tripartite or T&O map, it was centered on Jerusalem with east on top of the map. It represented Rome in the shape of a lion, and had an evident interest in the distribution of bishoprics. The original was destroyed during World War II, but some photographs and color copies remain. Topic Hereford Mappa Mundi 1300. The Hereford Mappa Mundi is a detailed Mappa Mundi based on the T&O map style, dating to c. 1300. The map is signed by one Richard of Haldingham or Lafford. Drawn on a single sheet of vellum, it measures 158 by 133 centimeters, 62 by 52 in. The writing is in black ink, with additional red and gold, and blue or green for water, with the Red Sea colored red. The captions demonstrate clearly the multiple functions of these large medieval maps, conveying a mass of information on biblical subjects and general history, in addition to geography. Jerusalem is drawn at the center of the circle, east is on top, showing the Garden of Eden in a circle at the edge of the world. One. Great Britain is drawn at the northwestern border, bottom left, 22 and 23. Curiously, the labels for Africa and Europe are reversed, with Europe scribed in red and gold as Africa, and vice versa. An open access high resolution digital image of the map with more than 1,000 place and name annotations is included among the 13 medieval maps of the world edited in the Virtual Mappa project. <laughs> Pietro Vesconti's World Map 1321. Italian geographer Pietro Vesconti was a pioneer of the field of the Portolan chart. His nautical charts are among the earliest to map the Mediterranean and Black Sea regions accurately. He also produced progressively more accurate depictions of the coastlines of Northern Europe. In his world map of 1321 he brought his experience as a maker of portolans to bear, the map introduced a previously unheard of accuracy to the Mappa Mundi genre. The world map, as well as a map of the Holy Land and plan of Acre and Jerusalem were made for inclusion in Marino Sanuto's Liber Secretorum Fidelium Crucis. Uh, 
Topic: <laughs> Catalan World Atlas 1375. The Catalan World Atlas was produced by the Majorcan Cartographic School and is attributed to Cresc Abraham. It has been in the Royal Library of France, now the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, since the time of Charles V. The Catalan Atlas originally consisted of six vellum leaves folded down the middle, painted in various colors, including gold and silver. The first two leaves contain texts in Catalan language covering cosmography, astronomy, and astrology. These texts are accompanied by illustrations. The texts and illustration emphasize the Earth's spherical shape and the state of the known world. They also provide information to sailors on tides and how to tell time at night. Unlike many other nautical charts, the Catalan atlas is red with the north at the bottom. As a result of this the maps are oriented from left to right, from the far east to the Atlantic. The first two leaves, forming the oriental portion of the Catalan atlas, illustrate numerous religious references as well as a synthesis of medieval Mapai Mundi, Jerusalem located close to the center, and the travel literature of the time, notably Marco Polo's Book of Marvels and the Travels and Voyage of Sir John Mandeville. Many Indian and Chinese cities can be identified. Topic: Da Ming Hun Yi Tu, World Map after 1389. The Da Ming Hun Yi Tu, Chinese Da Ming Hun Yi Tu, literally amalgamated map of the Great Ming Empire, world map, likely made in the late 14th or the 15th century, shows China at the center and Europe halfway around the globe, depicted very small and horizontally compressed at the edge. The coast of Africa is also mapped from an Indian Ocean perspective, showing the Cape of Good Hope area. It is believed that maps of this type were made since about the 1320s, but all earlier specimens have been lost, so the earliest survivor is the elaborate, colorful Da Ming Hun Yi Tu, painted on 17 square meters 180 square feet of silk. Topic: Kangnido World Map 1402. The Kangnido, the full Hanja name means Map of Integrated Lands and Regions of Historical Countries and Capitals, is a map of the world made in Korea in 1402. Created under the supervision of Korean officials as part of a cultural project of the newly founded Joseon dynasty, it is the most familiar example of the known world maps based on Chinese cartographic techniques with additional input from Western sources, via Islamic scholarship in the Mongol Empire, superficially similar to the Da Ming Hun Yi Tu, which has been less well known in the West because it is kept in closed archive storage the Kangnido shows its Korean origin in the enlargement of that country, and incorporates vastly improved though wrongly positioned, scaled and oriented mapping of Japan. Elsewhere, the map betrays a decorative rather than practical purpose, particularly in the portrayal of river systems, which form unnatural loops rarely seen on Chinese maps. Nonetheless, it is considered as superior to anything produced in Europe prior to the end of the 15th century. Topic: <laughs> De Virgo World Map 1411 to 1415. 
The De Virgo world map was made by Albertinus de Virgo between 1411 and 1415. Albertin de Virga, a Venetian, is also known for a 1409 map of the Mediterranean, also made in Venice. The world map is circular, drawn on a piece of parchment 69.6 cm x 44 cm 27.4 in x 17.3 in. It consists of the map itself, about 44 cm 17 in, in diameter, and an extension containing a calendar and two tables. Bianco's world map 1436. Andrea Bianco's Atlas of 1436 comprises 10 leaves of vellum, measuring 29 cm x 38 cm, 11 in x 15 in, in an 18th century binding. The first leaf contains a description of the rule of Martelloio for resolving the course, with the circle and square, two tables, and two other diagrams. The next eight leaves contain various navigation charts. The ninth leaf contains a circular world map measuring 25 cm in, in circumference. And the final leaf contains the Ptolemaic world map on Ptolemy first projection, with graduation. Some believe Bianco's maps were the first to correctly portray the coast of Florida, as a macro peninsula is attached to a large island labeled Antilia. Bianco also collaborated with Fra Mauro on the Fra Mauro world map of 1459. Borgia world map early 15th century Mainly a decoration piece, the Borgia map is a world map made sometime in the early 15th century, and engraved on a metal plate. Topic. Genoese map 1457. The Genoese map of 1457 is a world map that relied extensively on the account of the traveller to Asia Niccolò da Conti, rather than the usual source of Marco Polo. The author is unknown, but is a more modern development than the Fra Mauro world map, less intricate and complete, with fairly good proportions given to each of the continents. The map depicts the main landmarks of the time, Prester John in Africa, the Great Khan in China, Xylem, Salam and Sumatra, and the design of a three-masted European ship in the Indian Ocean, something which had not occurred, suggesting that a sea lane was a possibility. Topic. Fra Mauro world map 1459 The Fra Mauro map was made between 1457 and 1459 by the Venetian monk Fra Mauro. It is a circular planisphere drawn on parchment and set in a wooden frame, about 2 meters 6 feet 7 in, in diameter. The original world map was made by Fra Mauro and his assistant Andrea Bianco, a sailor cartographer, under a commission by King Afonso V of Portugal. The map was completed on April 24, 1459, and sent to Portugal, but did not survive to the present day. Fra Mauro died the next year while he was making a copy of the map for the Signori of Venice, and the copy was completed by Andrea Bianco. The map is preserved in the Museo Correr in Venice. 
Topic: Martellus world map 1490. The world map of Henricus Martellus Germanus, Heinrich Hammer, c. 1490, was remarkably similar to the terrestrial globe later produced by Martin Bahiam in 1492, the Erdipfel. Both show heavy influences from Ptolemy, and both possibly derive from maps created around 1485 in Lisbon by Bartolomeo Columbus. Although Martellus is believed to have been born in Nuremberg, Bahame's hometown, he lived and worked in Florence from 1480 to 1496. Topic: <laughs> Bahame's Erdöpfel Globe, 1492. The Erdöpfel German, Earth Apple, produced by Martin Bahiam in 1492 is considered to be the oldest surviving terrestrial globe. It is constructed of a laminated linen ball reinforced with wood and overlaid with a map painted by Georg Glockenden. The Americas are not included yet, as Columbus returned to Spain no sooner than March 1493. It shows a rather enlarged Eurasian continent and an empty ocean between Europe and Asia. The Caribbean islands may already be represented as well, even before Columbus's return, under the name of the mythical St. Brendan's Island. Japan and Asian islands are disproportionately large. The idea to call the globe apple may be related to the Reichsipfel. Imperial Apple, Globus Cruciger, which was also kept in Nuremberg along with the Imperial Regalia. In 1907, it was transferred to the Germanic Museum in Nuremberg. After 1492 Topic: Juan de la Cosa map, 1500. The Juan de la Cosa, a Spanish cartographer, explorer, and conquistador, born in Santonia in the northern autonomous region of Cantabria, made several maps, of which the only survivor is the Mapa Mundi of 1500. It is the first known European cartographic representation of the Americas. It is now in the Museo Naval in Madrid. Reproductions of it are given by Humboldt in his Atlas Géographique et Physique. Topic: Cantino World Map 1502. The Cantino Planisphere or Cantino World Map is the earliest surviving map showing Portuguese discoveries in the East and West. It is named after Alberto Cantino, an agent for the Duke of Ferrara, who successfully smuggled it from Portugal to Italy in 1502. It shows the islands of the Caribbean and the Florida coastline, as well as Africa, Europe and Asia. The map is particularly notable for portraying a fragmentary record of the Brazilian coast, discovered in 1500 by Portuguese explorer Pedro Álvarez Cabral who conjectured whether it was merely an island or part of the continent that several Spanish expeditions had just encountered farther north cf. Amerigo Vespucci. Topic: Cavario map, c. 1505. The Cavario map, also known as the Cavari map or Canario map, is a map drawn by Nicolas de Cavari, circa 1505. 
It is hand-drawn on parchment and colored, being composed of 10 sections or panels, measuring 2.25 by 1.15 meters (7.4 by 3.8 feet). Historians believe that this undated map signed with Nicolae de Caveri Januensis was completed in 1504–05. It was probably either made in Lisbon by the Genoese Canveri, or copied by him in Genoa from the very similar Cantino map. It shows the east coast of North America with surprising detail and was one of the primary sources used to make the Waldseemuller map in 1507. The Caverio map is currently at Bibliothèque Nationale de France in Paris. Topic: Reich World Map 1507. Johannes Reich an explorer, cartographer, astronomer and painter from the Low Countries produced the second oldest known printed representation of the New World. The Reich map was published and widely distributed in 1507. It uses Ptolemy coniform projection, as does the Contarini Rosselli 1506 map. Both document Christopher Columbus's discoveries as well as that of John Cabot, including information from Portuguese sources and Marco Polo's account. There are notes on his map that clearly were from Portuguese sources. Newfoundland and Cuba are shown connected to Asia, as Columbus and Cabot believed. Sipganus, Marco Polo's Japan, is identical with Spaniola, Hispaniola on the Reich map. The presence of codfish is noted on the Reich map in the area of the Grand Banks of Newfoundland and shows the discoveries the Portuguese had made along the African coast and shows India as a triangular peninsula with Ceylon in the correct proportion and position. Greenland is shown connected to Newfoundland and Asia on Reusch's map, and not Europe as earlier maps had showed. Around the North Pole, Reich drew islands, based on reports in the book Inventio Fortunata of the English friar Nicholas of Lynn. The island above Norway shows remarkable similarities to Svalbard, which was not discovered until 1597 by Willem Barents. Reich calls it European Hyperborea, and a peninsula stretching out towards it is clearly marked with the church of Sancti Odulfi, St. Olaf's Church in Vardo on the Finnmark coast. Topic: Waldseemuller and Ringman map, 1507. The cartographers Martin Waldseemuller and Matthias Ringman from southern Germany, supported by the mapping friend René II, Duke of Lorraine, collected map data over several years, including information on the most recent discoveries, to build up a new collective work of geography and cartography. Along with a book they further incorporated, for the first time in history, the name America on a map, holding the strong opinion that it was a new continent that Amerigo Vespucci had discovered on his voyage and not only a few smaller islands as Christopher Columbus did in the West Indies. Piri Reis map 1513. The Piri Reis map is a famous world map created by 16th-century Ottoman Turkish admiral and cartographer Piri Reis. The surviving third of the map shows part of the western coasts of Europe and North Africa with reasonable accuracy, and the coast of Brazil is also easily recognizable. 
Various Atlantic islands including the Azores and Canary Islands are depicted, as is the mythical island of Antillia. The map is noteworthy for its apparent southeastward extension of the American continent to depict a southern landmass that some controversially claim is evidence for early awareness of the existence of Antarctica. Alternatively, it has been suggested that this is actually a record of the coast as far as Cape Horn, explored secretly by Portuguese navigators before 1507, when it appeared on the Waldseemuller map, and bent southeastward simply to fit on the parchment. Topic: Pietro Capo map, 1520. The map by Pietro Capo was one of the last world maps to feature the «Dragon's Tail» extending southwards from the far eastern extremity of Asia, the last vestige of Ptolemy landlocked depiction of the Indian Ocean, nearly 1,500 years earlier. Topic. Diogo Ribeiro map 1527. Diogo Ribeiro, a Portuguese cartographer working for Spain, made what is considered the first scientific world map, the 1527 Padron Real, the first world map based on empiric latitude observations. There are six copies attributed to Ribeiro, including at the Weimar Grand Ducal Library 1527 Mundus Novus and at the Biblioteca Apostolica Vaticana, in Vatican City 1529 Propaganda Map or Carta Universal. The layout of the map Mapamundi is strongly influenced by the information obtained during the Magellan Elcano trip around the world. Diogo's map delineates very precisely the coasts of Central and South America. However, neither Australia nor Antarctica appear, and the Indian subcontinent is too small. The map shows, for the first time, the real extension of the Pacific Ocean. It also shows, for the first time, the North American coast as a continuous one probably influenced by the Estevão Gomes exploration in 1525. It also shows the demarcation of the Treaty of Tordesillas. Mercator World Map Flemish geographer and cartographer Gerardus Mercator World Map of 1569 introduced a cylindrical map projection that became the standard map projection known as the Mercator Projection. It was a large planisphere measuring 202 by 124 cm 80 by 49 in, printed in 18 separate sheets. While the linear scale is constant in all directions around any point, thus preserving the angles and the shapes of small objects, which makes the projection conformal, the Mercator projection distorts the size and shape of large objects, as the scale increases from the equator to the poles, where it becomes infinite. The title Nova et Octa Orbis Terrae Descriptio ad Usum Navigatium Emendate, New and Augmented Description of Earth Corrected for the Use of Navigation, and the map legends show that the map was expressly conceived for the use of marine navigation. The principal feature of the projection is that rum lines, sailing courses at a constant bearing, are mapped to straight lines on the map. The development of the Mercator projection represented a major breakthrough in the nautical cartography of the 16th century although it was only slowly adopted by seafaring nations. Topic. 
Theatrum Orbis Terrarum, by Abraham Ortelius, 1570. The Theatrum Orbis Terrarum, or Theatre of the World, is considered to be the first true modern atlas. Written by Abraham Ortelius and originally printed on May 20, 1570, in Antwerp, it consisted of a collection of uniform map sheets and sustaining text bound to form a book for which copper printing plates were specifically engraved. The Ortelius Atlas is sometimes referred to as the summary of 16th-century cartography. Many of his atlas maps were based upon sources that no longer exist or are extremely rare. Ortelius appended a unique source list, the Catalogus Octorum, identifying the names of contemporary cartographers, some of whom would otherwise have remained obscure. Three Latin editions of this, besides a Dutch, a French, and a German edition, appeared before the end of 1572. Twenty five editions came out before Ortelius' death in 1598, and several others were published subsequently, for the Atlas continued to be in demand until approximately 1612. Topic. Die ganze Welt in einem Kleberblatt by Heinrich Bunting, 1581. The Bunting Clover Leaf Map, also known as the World in a Clover Leaf, German title Die ganze Welt in einem Kleberblatt, Welches ist der Stadt Hanover minus Leben Vaterlandes Wappen is an historic Mappa Mundi drawn by the German Protestant pastor, theologist, and cartographer Heinrich Bunting. The map was published in his book Itinerarium Sacrae Scriptura Travel Through Holy Scripture, in 1581. Today the map is found within the Iran Laor Maps Collection in the National Library of Israel in Jerusalem. A mosaic model of the map is installed on the fence of Safra Square at the site of Jerusalem's City Hall. The map is a figurative illustration, in the manner of the medieval Mappa Mundi format, depicting the world via a clover shape. The shape is a symbolization of the Christian Trinity and a component at the symbolization of the German city Hanover, where Bunting was born. The city of Jerusalem is represented as the center, surrounded by three central continents, with some more areas of the world being accordingly illustrated separately from the clover. Topic: Kunu Wangguo Quanta by Matteo Ricci, 1602. Kunu Wangguo Quanta, Chinese, Kunyu Wangguo Quantu, literally, a map of the myriad countries of the world, Italian, Carta Geografica Completa di Tutti i Regna del Mondo, Complete Geographical Map of All the Kingdoms of the World, printed by Italian Jesuit missionary Matteo Ricci at the request by Wanli Emperor in 1602, is the first known European-styled Chinese world map and the first Chinese map to show the Americas. The map is in classical Chinese, with detailed annotations and descriptions of various regions of the world, a brief account of the discovery of the Americas, polar projections, scientific explanation of parallels and meridians, and proof that the Sun is bigger than the Moon. Following Chinese cartographical convention, Ritchie placed China, the Middle Kingdom, at the center of the world. 
This map is a significant mark of the expansion Chinese knowledge of the world, and an important example of cultural syncretism directly between Europe and China. It was also exported to Korea and Japan as well. <inaudible> Hendrik Hondius map Nova Totius Terrarum Orbis Geographica AC Hydrographica Tabula is a map of the world created by Hendrik Hondius in 1630, and published the following year at Amsterdam, in the Atlas Atlantis Maioris Appendix. Illustrations of the four elements of fire, air, water, and land are included. In the four corners, there are portraits of Julius Caesar, Claudius Ptolemy, and the Atlas's first two publishers, Gerard Mercator and Jodocus Hondius, the father of Hendrik. Among its claims to notability is the fact that it was the first dated map published in an atlas, and therefore the first widely available map, to show any part of Australia, the only previous map to do so being Hessel Gerrits 1627 Card van Land van Dondracht, Chart of the Land of Eendracht, which was not widely distributed or recognised. The Australian coastline shown is part of the west coast of Cape York Peninsula, discovered by Jan Carstens in 1623. Curiously, the map does not show the west coast features shown in Jarrett's cart. Topic: <laughs> Nikolai's Vischer map, 1658. This engraved double hemisphere map, Orbis Terrarum Nova ed Accuratissima Tabula, was created by Nicolaes Vischer in 1658 in Amsterdam. It also contains smaller northern and southern polar projections. The border is decorated with mythological scenes, one in each corner, drawn by the painter Nicolaes Bircham, showing Zeus, Neptune, Persephone and Demeter. It is an early example of highly decorated Dutch world maps. Topic. Gerard van Schagen's Map of the World 1689. Gerard van Schagen CA, 1642–1724, was a cartographer from Amsterdam, known for his exquisite reproductions of maps, particularly of those by Nicolaes Vischer I and Frederick de Witt. The map is of 1689. The original size is 48.3 cm x 56.0 cm in x 22.0 in and was produced using copper engraving. There is only one known example, which is in the Amsterdam University. Topic. Samuel Dunn's Map of the World 1794. Samuel Dunn died 1794, was a British mathematician and amateur astronomer. His map covers the entire world in a double hemisphere projection. This map follows shortly after the explorations of Captain Cook in the Arctic and Pacific Northwest, so the general outline of North America is known. However, when this map was made, few inland expeditions had extended westward beyond the Mississippi River. Topic. See also. Here be dragons. History of cartography. Johannes Schoner globe, made in 1520. Mappa Mundi. Virtual Mappa. 
Nebra Sky Disk, a Bronze Age map of the cosmos. Terra Incognita The Zheng He Map, a world map dated to the 17th century but thought to be a copy of an early 15th century map. Vinland Map, a 15th century map of disputed authenticity. Web mapping Jambudvipa, a geographic idea originated in India. Dieppe maps Topic Notes Topic Further reading Broderson, Kai. 2012. Cartography. In Geography in Classical Antiquity. By Daniela Dweck, 99-110. Cambridge, UK, Cambridge Univ. Press. Edson, Evelyn. 1993. The Oldest World Maps, Classical Sources of 3-8th Century Mapimundi, Ancient World 24.2, 169-184. Fox, Michael, and Stephen R. Reimer. 2008. Mapai Mundi, representing the world and its inhabitants in texts, maps, and images in medieval and early modern Europe. Edmonton, Alberta, Department of English and Film Studies, University of Alberta. Goffart, Walter. 2003. Historical Atlases, The First Three Hundred Years, 1570–1870. Chicago, Univ, of Chicago Press. Harwood, Jeremy, and A. Sarah Bendall. 2006. To the Ends of the Earth, 100 Maps That Changed the World. Cincinnati, Ohio, David and Charles. Harvey, Paul D. A., ed. 2006. The Hereford World Map, Medieval World Maps and Their Context. London, British Library. Shirley, Rodney W. 1983. The Mapping of the World, Early Printed World Maps 1472–1700. London, Holland Press. Talbert, Richard J. A., ed. 2000. Barrington Atlas of the Greek and Roman World. Princeton, N. J., Princeton Univ. Press. Went, Henry, John Delaney, and Alex Bowles, 2010. Envisioning the World, the First Printed Maps 1472–1700. Santa Rosa, C.A., Sonoma County Museum. Woodward, David. 1985. Reality, Symbolism, Time, and Space in Medieval World Maps, Annals of the Association of American Geographers 75.4, 10 510–21. External links Media related to maps of the world before Columbus at Wikimedia Commons Index of maps of the early medieval period 400–1300 AD Mapping history, a learning resource from the British Library Geography and Map Reading Room at the Library of Congress Ancient World Maps The Pewdinger Map Virtual Mappa, eds. Martin Foys, Heather Waka et al. Schoenberg Institute of Manuscript Studies, 2018, an open-access digital edition of 13 medieval maps of the world.